In an attempt to prevent fatal injuries in football, I have invented this new type football helmet, which I believe will do much to rid the game of fatality. Although the major changes in football for the health and safety of players occurred later in the years, the importance of safety protocols and equipment was first brought up by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1905. His son was injured while playing college football, which piqued his interest into safety standards. Roosevelt learned that between 1890 and 1905, 45 players had died and countless more were injured. This triggered him to call a meeting of college football coaches to debate improving safety. While some coaches like William T. Reed Jr. from Harvard agreed with the changes, others such as Walter Camp from Yale were resistant to the safety changes. Reed organized a new rulemaking committee to rival the previous one controlled by Camp. Within a few months, the Intercollegiate Athletic Association, the forerunner to the NCAA, had come out with several new rules. In the end, they agreed to legalize the forward pass, abolish the mass formations, create a neutral zone between offense and defense, double the first down distance to 10 yards to be gained in three downs. During the 1930s, players wore molded leather helmets and a law was finally passed in 1939 that required players to wear a helmet. John T. Riddle, a high school football coach, began manufacturing the first plastic helmet as a safer alternative. The plastic frame held its shape when colliding with objects and contained more padding and cushion. It also had a plastic face mask. In the 1950s, padded plastic was used in helmets and face masks were added. In the 1970s, full cage face mask replaced a simple bar face mask. In the 1990s, grill face mask replaced a full cage face mask. And this is the current contemporary design for the helmet and face mask. There have been many changes to helmets and other safety equipment over the years, but it wasn't until 1982 that significant changes were made. The NCAA adopted the Injury Surveillance Program, which provides data on injury trends. A committee is tasked with recommending changes in rules, equipment, and coaching techniques to help reduce injury rates. With the implementation of the system, in 2006, data indicated that 7% of all football injuries were concussions, which led to concussion protocols. I think for good reason there's been an emphasis on concussion and there's been an emphasis on the big hits that everybody notices. What our study indicates is that that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are all of the other hits that players sustain in the course of playing a typical game of football without concussion and all of those sub-concussive hits seem to add up to cause damage to the brain that we can measure with MRI. The twisting aspect of the force is what is more correlated with the changes that we are observing in these players versus the direct hits. It makes sense because this part of the brain has what we call biomechanical susceptibility because it's really narrower. Now you have this big dome sitting on a very narrow cone and that predisposes it to twisting. The brain accumulates a whole variety of toxic like poisonous proteins. When those nerve cells break after each head hit, it's almost like garbage builds up in the brain. And there's a, the brain has a system for getting rid of that. But if it's overwhelmed because it's getting hit 70, 80, 90 times a day, those proteins just build up. To help reduce the number of concussions, the following changes were then established. Eye shields must be clear for quick medical diagnosis. Horse collars were made illegal and emphasis was placed on eliminating hits on defenseless players. No player is allowed to initiate contact and target an opponent with the crown of his helmet, and no player is permitted to initiate contact and target a defenseless opponent above the shoulders. College safety has come a long way from the early 1900s. It was and will continue to be a big debate. As more data is collected and we learn more about improving safety equipment and rules. The game will continue to improve in safety.